We call it physical AI. In order to create physical AI, we need three computers, and we created three computers to do so. El CEO de NVIDIA, Jensen Wang, realizó una intervención especial en una cumbre de IA en la India, que resultó fascinante porque su enfoque en la innovación y el impacto futuro de la inteligencia artificial en la industria. Fue una de esas charlas que te ofrece una visión clara sobre hacia dónde nos dirigimos en el ámbito de la IA en general. La mayoría de las charlas se enfocan en algún aspecto de la IA en concreto, pero esta cubrió tres temas clave que creo que la mayoría de la gente no está tomando en cuenta. Uno de ellos fue el tiempo de inferencia con el nuevo paradigma hacia el que se está moviendo la IA. Como sabrás, el nuevo modelo 01 piensa antes de responder, lo que significa que el modelo se vuelve más inteligente con cada respuesta. También se habló sobre los agentes y cómo van a impactar en el entorno laboral. Por último, se presentó una perspectiva muy interesante sobre cómo la IA física, especialmente los robots humanoides, cambiará el mundo en el futuro. Así que en este resumen te daré los detalles clave que necesitas conocer. El primer tema que abordó fue el nuevo concepto de tiempo de inferencia en IA. Explicó cómo este tipo de IA es bastante diferente, comparándola con los sistemas de pensamiento 1 y 2. El sistema 1 es rápido e intuitivo. Cuando alguien te pregunta algo, sabes la respuesta de inmediato. En cambio, el sistema 2 es más deliberativo, planifica y razona en ciertos pasos para llegar a una respuesta. Scaling law at the time of inference. The longer you think, the higher quality answer you can produce. This is not illogical. This is very, very intuitive to all of us. If you were to ask me, what's my favorite uh, Indian food, I would tell you chicken biryani. Okay? And I don't have to think about that very much, and I don't have to reason about that. I just know it. And there are many things that you can ask it. Like, for example, what's NVIDIA good at? NVIDIA is good at building AI supercomputers. NVIDIA is uh, great at building GPUs. And those are things that you know that it's encoded into your knowledge. However, there are many things that requires reasoning. You know, for example, if I had to travel from uh, Mumbai to California, uh, I want to do it in, the, uh, in a way that allows me to enjoy four other cities along the way. You know, today, uh, I got here at 3 a.m. this morning. Uh, I got here through Denmark, uh, I, uh, and right before Denmark, I was in Orlando, Florida, and before Orlando, Florida, I was in California. That was two days ago. And I'm still trying to figure out what day we're in right now. But anyways, I'm happy to be here. Uh, if I were to, to tell it, I would like to go from California uh, to Mumbai. Uh, I would like to do it within uh, three days. Uh, and I give it all kinds of constraints about what time I'm willing to leave and able to leave, uh, what hotels I like to stay at, so on and so forth, uh, the people I have to meet. The number of permutations of that, of course, uh, quite high. And so the planning of that process, coming up with a optimal plan is very, very complicated. And so that's where thinking, reasoning, planning comes in. And the more you compute, the higher quality answer uh, you could provide. And so we now have two fundamental scaling laws that is driving our technology development. First for training and now for inference. El siguiente tema fue sobre los agentes. Algo que está a punto de convertirse en realidad. Se espera que 2025 sea el año en que la IA autónoma se integre de lleno en el entorno laboral. Es probable que veamos estos agentes realizar diversas tareas para las personas de forma personalizada. Hacia finales de 2025 veremos el lanzamiento de varios sistemas de agentes autónomos, tanto gratuitos como de pago, que ofrecerán una, una amplia gama de servicios y soluciones. Ok, so I'm going to introduce a couple of other ideas. And so earlier I told you that we have Blackwell, we have all of the libraries, acceleration libraries that we were talking about before, but on top there are two very important platforms we're working on. One of them is called NVIDIA AI Enterprise, and the other is called NVIDIA Omniverse, and I'll explain each one of them very qu quickly. First, NVIDIA AI Enterprise. This is a time now where the large language models and the fundamental AI capabilities have reached a level of capabilities we're able to now create what is called agents. Large language models that understand, understand the data that, of course, is being presented. It could be, it could be streaming data, it could be vi video data, language model data. It could be data of all kinds. The first stage is perception. The second is reasoning about, given its observations, uh, what is the mission and what is the task it has to perform. In order to perform that task, the agent would break down that task into steps of other tasks and uh, it would reason about what it would take, and it would connect with other AI models. Some of them are uh, good at, for example, understanding PDF. 
Maybe it's a model that understands how to generate images. Maybe it's a model that uh, uh, is able to retrieve information, AI information, AI semantic data from a uh, proprietary database. So each one of these uh, large language models are connected to the central reasoning large language model we call agent. And so these agents are able to perform all kinds of tasks. Uh, some of them are maybe uh, marketing agents. Some of them are customer service agents. Some of them are chip design agents. NVIDIA has chip design agents all over our company helping us design chips. Maybe they're software engineering uh, agents. Uh, maybe, uh, uh, maybe they're able to do uh, marketing campaigns, uh, supply chain management. And so we're going to have agents that are helping our employees become super employees. These agents, or agentic AI models, uh, augment all of our employees to supercharge them, make them more productive. Now, when you think about these agents, it's really the way you would bring these agents into your company is not unlike the way you would onboard uh, someone uh, who's a new employee. You have to give them training curriculum. You have to uh, fine tune them, teach them how to use, uh, how to perform the skills and the, uh, understand the vocabulary of your, of your company. Uh, you evaluate them, and so they're evaluation systems. And you might guardrail them. If you're an accounting agent, uh, don't do marketing. If you're a marketing agent, you know, don't report earnings at the end of the quarter, so on and so forth. And so each one of these agents are guardrailed. Um, that entire process we put into essentially an agent life cycle suite of libraries, and we call that NEMO. Our partners are working with us to integrate these libraries into their platforms so that they could enable agents to be created, onboarded, deployed, improved into a life cycle of agents. And so this is what we call NVIDIA NEMO. We have, um, on the one hand, the libraries. On the other hand, what comes out of the output of it is an API inference microservice we call NIMS. Essentially, this is a factory that builds AIs. And NEMO is a suite of libraries that onboard and help you operate the AIs. And ultimately, your goal is to create a whole bunch of agents. Uh, we have partners here that we're working with. Aquí es donde entró en la fascinante charla sobre la IA física. Aunque los agentes en IA digital son eficaces y pueden operar a gran velocidad, surge la cuestión de cómo impactar el mundo físico manipular objetos y lograr tareas en el entorno real manteniendo esa misma escala. La respuesta son los robots humanoides y la IA física. Aquí ofreció una visión interesante sobre hacia dónde se dirige la IA física y su potencial de transformación en el mundo real. After agents. Now remember, every single company has employees, but most companies, the goal is to build something, to produce something, to make something. And that those things that people make it could be factories, it could be warehouses, it could be cars and planes and trains and uh, ships and so on and so forth. All kinds of things. Computers and servers, the servers that NVIDIA builds, it could be phones. Most companies in the largest of industries ultimately produces something. Sometimes produce production of service, which is the IT industry, but many of your customers are about producing something. Those, that next generation of AI needs to understand the physical world. We call it physical AI. In order to create physical AI, we need three computers. And we created three computers to do so. The DGX computer, which Blackwell, for example, is, is a reference design and architecture for, to create things like DGX computers for training the model. That model needs a place to be refined. It needs a place to learn. It needs the place to apply its physical capability, its robotics capability. We call that Omniverse, a virtual world that obeys the laws of physics where robots can learn to be robots. And then when you're done with the training of it, that AI model could then run in the actual robotic system. That robotic system could be a car, it could be a robot, it could be an AV, it could be an autonomous moving robot, it could be a, a, a picking arm. Uh, it could be an entire factory or an entire warehouse that's robotic. And that computer we call AGX, Jetson AGX, DGX for training, and then Omniverse for doing the digital twin. 
Now here, here in India, we're, we've got a really great ecosystem who is working with us to take this infrastructure, take this ecosystem of capabilities to help the world build physical AI systems. And you know what I've really loved is at Acabo de lanzar mi proyecto más grande hasta la fecha, una newsletter sobre inteligencia artificial con la que podrás mantenerte al día de todo lo que está pasando con tan solo 5 minutos. Te lo resumo día a día. Tendrás el link en la descripción, así que si te interesa, regístrate, que es totalmente gratuito. Saludos.